God's grace, mercy, and peace be yours from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. As we take a look at our gospel lesson this day with the theme of the fountain of you, Christ our Lord says all sorts of things in today's gospel, but he keeps returning to the little children of the church. How appropriate as we have our Sunday school kickoff today, um, that Jesus would want to talk about the children of the church. So who is he speaking about? Who is this for? Is it just for little kids? Is it just for littler kids? Bigger little kids? I heard the word everybody over here somewhere. Yeah, possibility of that, you think? Let's see, as, as he says in verse 3, turn and become like a child. Verse 5, do not cause these little ones who believe in me to sin. Verse 10, do not despise, do not overlook, do not neglect or fail to take seriously these little ones. And finally, in verse 14, it's not the will of my Father in heaven that even one of these little ones should perish. Remember Nick at Night? How many of you remember Nick at Night? Not the cartoon. Yeah. yeah. Nicodemus went to Jesus to, to speak with him at night. Remember that in John chapter 3? He said, you must be born again, is what he told Nicodemus. What was he talking about? He was talking about that new birth, the birth of water and of the Spirit, he says. He was talking about becoming a child again, right? To be born again. To become a child again in the house. He was talking about going back into mama's womb, right? No, he wasn't. What was he talking about? Anybody? Spiritually? Yeah, but how does that happen? How are you born of water and the spirit? How are you born spiritually? Baptism. Through baptism. He was talking about baptism, yeah, in becoming a child. <laughs> We should consider the possibility that Jesus is talking about the very same thing here in today's gospel as well. Unless you turn, says the Lord, unless you become like a child, says the Lord, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So what is this turning that the Lord requires? Metanoia in the Greek, that is repentance, that God himself creates in baptism, right? Right? John the Baptist came proclaiming a baptism of repentance. Tie those two together. Repent, that is, be baptized, is also how Peter preached in Acts chapter 2. How can we then become like a child? I mean, some of you are a little, a little bit old to get back in mama's womb, right? Like all of us. Yeah, just ask Mama. I guarantee she'll she'll say no way. Yeah, even even when that child is what, like a day old. Whoa, too old already, huh, Mom? <laughs> How many of you would take a, a one day old child and, and put back in the womb, Mom? Ready? For, no volunteers for that, huh? Well, that's probably a good thing. Because that's not what Jesus is talking about in becoming like a child. Be a child again. How can we become one of these little ones? One of these little ones who believe in Jesus. How can we do that unless God himself first gives us the right to be called children of God? Children born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, he says in John 1. So there are very strong baptismal ties in our text this day. And that's a good thing. Because if today's gospel lesson is, is not a baptismal gospel, well then it's, it's really a gospel that swings like a club and, and it bites like a dog. Think about it this way. How does he say, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, says Jesus, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck to be drowned in the depth of the sea. So according to these words, if this gospel is, is not about baptism, then, then according to these words, each one of us should be looking at the world from the bottom of a lake somewhere, right? 
Glub, 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 glub. With a millstone tied around our neck. And sometimes we just, you know, we're just trying to, to greet the little baby. We, we give the baby space and space and think, oh, and you know, we make the baby cry because he doesn't know us. Has that ever happened to anybody? You ever done that where you, you wanted to see a cute little baby, right? And, and you, well, let me, and, and as soon as you take the baby, what happens? The baby starts crying. You scared the little kid, right? He doesn't know you. You're a stranger. That doesn't happen for me as pastor. You know, I know it happens for some people. <laughs> Every once in a while, even in baptisms, you've seen it, yeah. They cry for me, too. Again, the Lord says in today's gospel, see to it that you do not despise one of these little ones. Despising something can be as simple as neglecting or overlooking it. Who among us has, has bypassed a child? Uh, has, has overlooked, has neglected, maybe for the sake of, well, you know, don't bother me right now, I'm reading the newspaper. Or, or I'm, I'm busy, I'm watching TV. I mean, you know, sports, you know, I had to watch Michigan or Michigan State yesterday, right? You know, don't bother me, kid, right? We neglect. Has that ever happened to anybody? Have you ever done that? As, as my mom has taught me, and she was in first service, by the way, today, mom and dad, you know, if the shoe fits, wear it. Right now, I think we all have the right size shoe on, don't we? Who's not guilty of neglecting a child at a time or two or three in our lives? In today's gospel, that is not a baptismal gospel. That is a gospel that intends to put you in mind of your baptism. Then there's not much comfort here for us. Stated another way, this gospel if it's not a baptismal gospel, then it's really not a gospel at all. It's really the law. The law. Instruction and demand and warning and threats for who we are in our sin. In order to survive this gospel, we should be careful. We have to give careful consideration to its, its baptismal possibilities. We should place our Lord's word in today's gospel right next to those of our Lord Jesus in John chapter 3. Listen as, as Jesus says here, Unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. In John chapter 3, Jesus says the same thing. Unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So once again, what is this turning that the Lord requires of us? It's that turning of repentance that God himself creates in holy baptism. How can we become children again unless God performs a miracle? How is it that, that we can turn from our sins? How is it that we can turn and become a little child by the miracle of that God performs in us. He does that for you. Because if you're doing it for you, what is that? That's law. If it's your good works, if it's your action, that's the law. But God doing it in you and for you, that's the gospel. And he did that for you and in you. He made you to be a child of God. When did he do that for you? In the waters of holy baptism. And so this day, as we hear this gospel, we remember, we recall, we're reminded of our baptism. Where there we are connected to the fountain of youth. There we are able to turn and be little children. Any children of God here today? I'm a child of God. Are you a child of God? How is that that I and you, how is it that we are children of God? Is it our doing? Not a bit. We are children of God because of what Jesus has done for us in the waters of holy baptism. Let the little children come to me, he says. Is that just then for the little ones? No, we're all children of God. Isn't that cool? God takes care of us as his children. He calls us to be part of his family. 
Jesus Christ, your God, has so closely identified himself with you that he considers himself to be you and you to be him. Your body is his body, his body is yours. Your mind is his mind, his mind is yours. Your sins are his sins, his righteousness is your righteousness. Jesus so closely identifies himself with you in baptism that he says about you in today's gospel, whoever receives one such child in my name receives who? Receives me, Jesus says. So you receive a brother in Christ, you receive a sister in Christ. Look at the people around you for a moment, folks. They don't have to be just a baby. They don't have to be just a child in the sense of what we call children. You know, what under the age of eleven or something. If you're, you know, going to the theme parks these days, right? Yeah, they're adults after that, right? You got to pay adult admission when they are. Yeah. Right. All of you, children, and and when we receive each other, who is it that we get to receive? God's word says we receive Jesus. If we looked at each other in this light, would it change the way that we look at each other? How many of you think it would change the way you look at somebody if you look at them and say, oh my goodness, I don't see just Cindy there. I don't just see Alexis there. I see Jesus there. I don't see Gil there. I don't see Paul there. I see, that's Jesus. Am I making this stuff up? Where's this come from? That's what Jesus said, isn't it? If you receive one of these little ones, you receive me. So when you receive one another, who is it that we receive? Jesus. Why, that whole sharing of the peace, that whole uh, greeting that we did this morning changes a little bit now, doesn't it? Think about that. Who are we? We are children of God. Jesus so earnestly wants you to be included in the preaching of his gospel, the forgiveness of his sins, that he sternly says to his disciples, his apostles, the ones that he's sent out, his New Testament writers, see that you do not despise one of these, do not overlook them, do not neglect them. I am sending you 12 disciples out into the world, and also all of us, as we are his sent ones, his apostles as well. With my life-giving words of forgiveness upon your lips, and with my life-strengthening meal of Holy Communion in our hands. See that you do not despise one of these. For I tell you that in heaven the angel, their angels always see the face of my Father. These two will one day see the Father's face. What a great joy as we start this day for our Sunday school program again. And, and we get to do that with little children, yes. But, but big children, too. For all God's children, for all who are children of God, this word is true. Jesus desires your eternal life. He desires your bodily resurrection from the dead. He desires your forgiveness of sins. Jesus and his Father in heaven desire the very same thing for each of us. It's not the will of my Father who is in heaven that even one of these little ones should perish. And so the best thing about this baptismal approach in today's gospel lesson is that it helps us to, to avoid idolizing or idealizing either and or both of the little children. Have you ever seen a little baby and said, oh, what a precious little innocent child, something like that, said that, done that, been there, yeah, me too. Okay. The scriptures teach us to believe that our sons and daughters, our babies, are just mm -hmm. as sinful as we are. Sinful by nature, right? Sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Says Psalm 51. Childlike innocence, and there is that, 
is not that the child is innocent, but there is a childlike innocence. Childlike innocence is not what saves us. What saves us? Faith in Christ Jesus. Baptism, where our sins are washed away, where repentance is given, the faith is given, and we are brought in and called to be part of the family of God, and therein we are all his children. And we get to be one of these little children. Become like a child this day. Remember your baptism this day. Some of you have been looking for the fountain of youth in all the wrong places. It's right here before you, folks. The fountain of youth. You're a child. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how big you are. You're a child of God. What does he say in St. Paul? St. Paul says in Titus chapter 3, the washing of rebirth and the renewal of the Holy Spirit. That's where the children are not born innocent. They're made innocent through the waters of holy baptism. Given that righteousness of Christ. Turn and become like children so that you may enter the kingdom of heaven. And when you walk out these doors, remember that too. Remember this fountain of youth. Remember that you are a child of God. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus the life everlasting. Amen.